Hey, VC here. I want to talk to you about the Red Bull Last Stand. I want to tell you that story. It was, it was maybe one of the greatest events that I've ever been to. It was phenomenal. Uh, it was in San Antonio, Texas. You race around the Alamo. So dope. I want to tell you this story about the Red Bull Last Stand. Okay, so Red Bull hit me up after the Red Bull Bay Climb. They were like, bro, your video is pretty sick. We'd like for you to come out and do another event, which is the last stand. Now the last stand is a crit. It's, um, it's basically like a crit race, okay? But it's a last and out, which means it starts with 50 guys and every lap, the last guy gets booted. And you just dwindle that down to the last dude. They have fixie men and women and open men and women. Obviously I'm not riding the fixie, I'm doing the geared. That was, that was the mission, dude. But here's the thing is that this event brings out heavy hitters. I mean, it is, it's a legit event. So when they asked me, I was a little hesitant because one, I, I didn't want to go all that way to Texas, just get smashed to be the first one out or not even qualify because you actually have to qualify for the event. You have to put in your best one, lap go as fast as you can for one lap and then because i think there was 80 or 90 guys registered and only 50 can do the night show so i was very worried about like doing this whole vlog and having all this pressure to make a video getting out there and not and riding one lap and then uh not even getting to race that was i was pretty freaked out about it but so i was like let's do it let's just send it uh i'm in so now the nearest airport to me is fresno it's a very small airport. They basically have little pond puddle jumper type planes, okay? Not great. The only option he could get me, the, my, my connection at Red Bull, was a very early flight, six in the morning. I had to wake up my family at four to drive the hour uh, to get to the airport. I was able to get a bike bag from Ski Cone. Super sick, dude. Here, the, the, the bag flies uh, with you and um, it's very easy to put in. You don't have to break down the bike. It's phenomenal, dude. I, I did the, this bike bag is amazing. I go up to the counter. The lady says, what are you doing? Because I'm trying to check my, my big bike bag in. She goes, uh, what are you doing? We don't accept these. You have to be here two hours early. And I was like, two hours early? What do you mean? Like, I didn't see that on any of the, the literature that I, when I was checking in for the plane, two hours early, she was like, there's nothing we can do. We cannot take your bike. What? <laughs> Not good. And my wife is driving away back up to town. I don't know what to do. I'm just freaking out. So then I'm like trying to talk to managers and they're like, look, if you can get your bike through security, maybe they'll take it at the plane. So I get to security. They're like, we can't take this through the x-ray machine. What are you talking about? But this ski comb bag is so amazing that all I had to do is unzip it and that just show them everything. So after a lot of convincing, I was able to get them to uh, ch my bike go through security. But it took a long time in security to get the bike through. So they're saying, you know, your, your plane's boarding in like 20 minutes. Um, I don't know if they're gonna take it now. So I'm just like sprinting down, you know, to go get uh, to get to the gate. I get there and the guy just looks at it and he's like, how did you even get this here? And so I tell him the whole story, I'm like, please load my bike. He's like, no, it's not gonna happen. Awesome. So then I watch my plane fly away. I call my guy at Red Bull, I'm like, bro, my plane is in the air and I'm not on it. Um, <laughs> so he's like, all right, we'll get you dialed. Like, don't worry about it. And the plane, they actually rescheduled me a new, a new plane. It's like four hours later. Um, and I had to go back through the whole thing and recheck my bag. Such a fiasco, okay? Such a fiasco getting the bike onto the plane and to Texas. I 
I get in Texas and I'm honestly very worried about my bike because the ski comb bag, it's not a hard case, it's, a, it's like a soft shell. And so I'm kind of tripping out on, dude, is this thing gonna just be battered? Is it gonna be in pieces? Is it gonna be broken? Perfect, perfect. Dude, the bike, there wasn't anything wrong with it. The bike flew, it was so good, and it's so easy to transport. I mean, that bike bag was just winner, winner all day. So the race is on Saturday, I flew on on Friday. I uh, jumped into an Uber, got to the hotel, pretty sick hotel, um, got my stuff in there, built out my bike pretty much right away. And they had this big kind of um, fixie event at this like bar and grill type place where you were gonna do sort of this night ride with a bunch of fixies. It was so much fun. Uh, it was very, very cool. There was like guys with music playing. Like, the dude was like towing this trailer uh, that had just bumping beats. It was very cool. We kind of took a tour of the city. Uh, it was a, it was very neat. Um, I got to hang out with some some really cool guys. But at this point, I was super hungry. So me and James found the nearest Chipotle, went there, smashed it. It was delicious, and then hopped into bed, got ready for you know to get ready for day day two. Now the race is not until late at night, like eight o'clock is when the main starts. Qualifying, I think for me was at three o'clock, and so I kind of have a lot of time to just do whatever. And I had a guy uh, hit me up. He was local to Texas, not local to the area, but uh, he was there racing as well. And he was like, hey dude, let's go for a morning spin. You know, let's go kind of explore and loosen up our legs. Uh, and I was like, that is what I wanna do, for sure. But so me and Mark uh, took a little tour of San Antonio and it was friggin' amazing. San Antonio, I wanna say is, I think it's the oldest town in America. It's, it's, it was selling, celebrating its 300 years um, of being a town, which is older than America, right? 1776 is when America was started, right? And nuts. I fell in love with San Antonio on this ride. Bro, it was, it was a really cool town. So we get done with like our hour and a half ride and I go back to the hotel and I'm just kind of hanging out, getting getting ready. Um, I think I ordered room service and got like a bowl of oatmeal or something, which sucked. It was the worst oatmeal I've ever had. <laughs> so, and it was so expensive. Room service, was like 20 bucks for this bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> I headed over to the event around one. That's when qualifying was starting. Now it was pouring rain at the start of the race, okay? or start a qualifying, pouring rain. But then after the men's fixed, which there was a couple crashes, it was pretty gnarly, dude. I can't believe these guys, these fixed dudes are trying to do hot laps in the pouring rain, nuts. In the house, we got riders from all over the world, every corner of the earth. Then it was like about to, I was about 30 minutes away from us going, or my heat, and it's just, the skies parted, the sun came out. It, it was perfect. It was so awesome. So I jumped on a trainer, I started warming up, which dude, San Antonio has a humidity level of insanity, okay? I am doing 150 watts on the trainer and just pouring sweat, just pouring sweat. Dude, it was insane. So again, I am full gas, anxiety, nervous, just everything, I just like, my stomach is turning. I'm so nervous about this. I get to the line, um, we watch the guys just throw down a heater from um, the heat one. So me and a couple guys, we get a plan. One of them, Nate, who actually gets coached by my coach, which is awesome. 
uh, we have this plan of like, hey, let's stick together, okay? Because you only get five laps to put down your fastest one lap, all right? So you can't just, you gotta be like uh, strategic about this. So then it's like, hey, let's just form this little group of like four dudes. Let's stick together. Let's go put a absolute piping of a lap in on lap two and also lap four. And if we just work as a group, even if, right, even if just, just one guy on the front, I just felt like that would have been the better way to do it. That's the plan. And right at the start, uh, this guy Nate, the bearded cyclist, he's telling me um, that he really can't get hurt. Uh, he doesn't want to wreck and he's feeling super good and all this stuff. He's talking about wrecking and how he doesn't really want to be in the pack so that he's just gonna, he's just gonna go by himself. He's not gonna be a part of our group. He's just gonna completely crush it on the front and just throw down his fast lap. So you start, you do a nice like little easy lap and then you come around and then it's five laps. And it, the, the course is still a little bit wet and there's still some puddles, but for the most part it's dry and we're just, yeah just slamming okay very technical course a course where you'll make up more time in the turns than you will really under power do 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 and then all of a sudden uh i'm just watching a dude go tumbling down the road okay hardcore i'm just like whoa i almost just wrecked and ended my day that was nate the bearded cyclist who was just telling me that he was gonna go off the front so that he didn't wreck and he just broke his collarbone. Insane, man. He hit hard. And I guess his pedal broke. Something broke on his bike while he was accelerating. Gah. So then it kind of messed everything up for that heater of a lap. Right? Um, and so then the next lap, lap three, everyone sort of like spread apart and kind of just started doing their own thing. I took lap three easy. And I thought, I was pretty confident that that first lap would have landed us in a position to qualify because it was it was pretty fast but i wasn't sure so then this other guy comes up and he goes and i was like asking him like well, what are you gonna do what are we gonna do what do you think what do we get we do another one and he said i'm gonna do another one so i said i'm just gonna ride your wheel and then pass you at the finish <laughs> so it, that's what i did and uh he took off he was slamming i just sat on his wheel and then right at the finish just like kind of came around him to ensure that if it was down to one or two spots that that guy I would get in before him <laughs> so now at the end of qualifying I have no idea if my time was good or not all I know is that the fastest time is significantly faster than my time so I am on pins and needles waiting for them to post the results everyone is bro everyone's just standing around the little area like because there's i want to say there's 80 80 to 90 guys registered but only 50 spots available so uh so i'm just sitting there i'm literally about to puke about to puke dude because i just i'm so nervous i'm so nervous that i'm not going to qualify results are posted and i'm just like oh my goodness i don't want to look and i go over there and i'm looking for my name at the bottom I start at the bottom and I'm just looking at, cause they have a line. These people suck, these people don't. And so I'm looking at the, do I suck list, okay? So then I go up, 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 up. And dude, I, I think I qualified 20th, 20th. I was stoked. I actually grabbed, I didn't get it on film, but I grabbed this guy next to me and I was like, yes! I was so stoked, it was so, such a relief to have qualified and qualified 20th. Boom, we're in, we're in the night show. First of all, let's talk about the fixie race for a second. Right now, I cannot remember the guy's name who won. Okay, but there were some serious heavy hitters in the fixie race. It blew apart instantly, dude. It was insanity how much that race blew apart. But some guy, and, and maybe I'll tell his name in text or something, Dude went off solo for the entire race. I mean, there were guys going hard. And this guy was just blazing hot lap after hot lap after hot lap. Dude, never to be seen again. It was the most craziest thing I've ever seen. The, the guy just soloed away from everyone while there was a big pack. Now, 
what was ended up happening was that so many guys were just off the back that if you got lapped, then you're out. So it wasn't, it really didn't end up being last and out because so many guys were getting cut in chunks by getting lapped uh, that eventually, like very quickly on, there was really only eight or nine guys, I believe, uh, chasing the one guy in the leader. I, I mean, it, it was really crazy the, the difference in skill level, because Fixie also has a lot of skill, not just fitness, but a lot more skill. So the difference in the guy in the front and the guy in the back is night and day difference. How hard was it from the gun? I mean, it looked I started, like- I started at 30, 31st, and from the gun, I jumped straight to like top 10. And then it was just so hard to, to, to stay with them. Like, it was just hard, it was so strung out. Yeah. She was wild. So walk me through, I mean, yeah, put so the power down? Yeah, I moved, I moved to Grand Junction, Colorado, for school this fall, so. I haven't been doing a lot of sprint workouts, I've been doing more climbing. So I knew my longer power was better than my sprint power, so. I just took off early. I was hoping someone would go with me and then they did it. <laughs> how important is it on the fixie to like have skills in the turns? Like how much time are you making up in the turns? I'd say that's one of the most important parts because if you pick the right gear, you should be able to spin it out on the straightaways and then keep your speed through the corners. So you can make up a lot of time just by going around the corners faster than other people. Just way more than like on a road bike. Do you know at all like what your power was for that effort? No, I, don't, I didn't even have a Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think they were going to catch you at any point? I didn't really know. I didn't know what the gap was at, but I couldn't see them, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Hey, that was awesome, bro. And here's the plan, that I'm going to live stream this bad boy from the new GoPro Hero 7, which I paid a lot of money for. They did not send it to me. I paid full pop. I tested the live stream at home. Worked good. So that's the plan. I'm Insta-storing all about and pushing that I'm going to do live streaming this freaking event. I tell Red Bull, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna live stream this thing, share my live stream. They're like, we got you, son. We're getting lined up. They're gonna start doing the call-ups. Now they call you up as you qualified. First gets to be in front, last is in last, okay? Because starting this thing, you really wanna be as far up front as possible. So I roll up to like the staging area, okay? And I go to start live streaming and it drops down the network for like hotspots. So I have a hotspot on my phone that I'm connecting to the GoPro. And it's just spinning, and it's spinning, and it's spinning, and it's spinning, and it's not finding my hotspot network. So I'm kind of freaking out, um, and I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I reset everything. I'm like doing all of this tech work on my phone while like the lights are out, and they're calling names. We're like five minutes from a very important race, and I'm trying to connect my stupid phone to the stupid GoPro. It's not working at all. I'm just like, forget it, whatever. This sucks that I can't live stream. At least I will just record it normal. And I go to record it normal and my GoPro freezes. Just completely freezes up. I can't get it to turn on or off or do anything. And, uh, and then they said, go. <laughs> so I was like, Gah! So like so bummed, right? Because Red Bull brought me out here not because I'm an amazing rider or because of any other reason other than to film the race and document the event. So I've started this race and the GoPro's not on. Or at least I don't know. I have no clue what the GoPro's doing. There's no feedback from it at all. And so then, and we got launched out like a freaking bullet bro and in turn one the only water on the course is in turn one 
uh, it's a very sketchy turn. So, you know, even though your tires are dry, you literally just instantly get them wet right before you go into turn one. So we take off and uh, I started mid pack, but I was messing with my GoPro for the first lap, trying to get it to turn on, trying to get some sort of idea if it's working or not which is obviously a stupid idea, but I really lost a ton of positions. I mean, I think I fell all the way back to, you know, 40th and I couldn't tell who was behind me. So every lap I essentially thought, dude, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get bumped immediately. So I was just rushing to the front, trying to pass guys. It was very difficult to make moves because of just how fast the race was. And it definitely took me a few laps to really get comfortable and sort of settle in um, to, to the pace. But by the time I did, I, I, there was like already gaps opening up from the front. But dude, I have never rode a crit as well as I rode this one. I was taking, like after the first five or six laps, dude, I was actually making moves in the turns. I was going faster in the turns than anyone else, or at least anyone else around me, which is not my strong suit. Uh, there was actually, the last turn was sort of off camber with like cobblestone. It was nuts. And I was, that's where I was like making up all my time. It was really crazy. I, I was thinking I was gonna just be getting passed on the turns and, they, and guys were gonna be going way too fast on the turns and make me feel uncomfortable. But I felt overly comfortable. I felt fine railing through the turns. Yeah, and, and like I said, my GoPro did not work. So this, all this footage, I have no footage of the race. So these, these are from other people that were in the race. So about halfway through the race, um, a significant gap opened up and it was essentially top 20 and then maybe like a mid, a mid 20 or 15, 10, something like that, 20 up the road. And then I was like in a group of 10 and there was just no way to bridge that gap. Super bummer. And I didn't really know what position I was in. I was just trying to not get popped or not get pulled. Uh, and, and so then we sort of settled into this group that was just sort of taking pulls. Not me though. I took zero pulls. I was playing the game. Look, I want to do well at this race. Okay. And uh, so I'm not trying to stick my face in the wind at all because I saw a guy get on the front and he's drilling it. And then right at the last turn, everyone jumped around him. And I was like, dude, I'm not gonna be that guy. So I just played the game so well and I rode so well, I felt so well. And this is what just rah, got in my head so bad. And I was really frustrated with the race in general because of how well I was riding just in like bike handling and fitness wise and tactics. And if I had been in that front group, had been, vegan excuse, uh, dude, I honestly really feel confident I could have got top 10. But here's what's crazy is I, I, I want to say there's maybe 20, 25 guys up the road, okay? But in our little group, since we were sort of just kind of pulling, uh, and there was a bunch of guys that had gotten dropped, we weren't really in jeopardy of getting pulled yet. Uh, but there were guys that were leaking off the front group, not able to hold the pace. And then by the time we caught them, we were just motoring so fast that we'd pass them and then they would get popped, right? They'd get pulled from the race. So we were sort of like almost every lap catching a guy and passing that guy. So then he would get kicked. And that's, I mean, that's how the race went for a really long time. It was just sort of this little chase group that we weren't going to catch the leaders, uh, but we just kept catching little guys getting dripped off. And every guy we caught was just like, boom, there's another one. Boom, there's another one. Then we were dwindled down to about five guys in this little chase group that I was in. And then they tell us, hey, you guys are it. You are the last on the road. So then it started getting real gamey and you didn't want to be in the last of this group, right? So whoever crosses the finish line last gets kicked from the race. So then guys wouldn't go super hard during the lap, but as soon as you hit that last turn, lighting it up. And so, Dude, I was just playing it so well. I'd be on the back and let everyone else pull. And then going into the last turn, it was like the turn before the last turn, I would jump on the inside, rail that last turn and just make it every time. And so then out of this group of like five or six, it dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. 
until it was just me and one other guy. And, uh, and then again, I just hit him with this one move, which I don't have footage of it. I don't have freaking footage of how awesome I did at this race. It is what it is. So, um, he, we're going like, like he's going to out sprint me for sure. But again, I go two laps before the turn. I dive bomb the inside. I rail the last turn. I get it. Boom. But then there's an impossible gap to cover. Okay. Um, so that's it. So then I'm just going to do one more lap. I finish and I have no idea where I finished. Honestly, I have no clue. Um, I watched the rest of the race. It was neat to watch whatever, you know what I mean? I was, I was super bummed obviously, because I really felt like if I had made that front group, uh, I bet I, I would have been competitive just because of how I was feeling and how well I was riding my bike just as a bike. They do the ceremonies, they pop the champagne bottles, dude wins a ton of money, everyone's cheering, I'm depressed. <laughs> uh, but then I saw the results, and I got 17th out of 50. I mean, dude, that's, that's good. Okay, I mean, not good good, but pretty good. I was really happy with that. 17th um, in an event that is definitely not my skill set. A, a, an explosive, sprinty, technical crit. To get 17th um, and then to have felt the way I felt, I was very happy. I wasn't happy at first. I'm very happy with that result. Now, again, I was a total dick in the group that was chasing. I did zero work and I was just trying to get a better result, right? I, I, and I apologize. I met one of the guys at dinner afterwards I, and I apologize that I was being a dick. I was just, dude, I was just trying to not get kicked out of the race. I was definitely playing the game. The Red Bull Last Stand is such a unique event and such an amazing event. The Red Bull Bay Climb was awesome, very awesome. But I like this one the most. It's one of the most fun events I've ever had. Uh, to be racing around the Alamo and, uh, and just the culture and the town and the, you're racing at night. There's so many things about this event that just feel good, dude. So good. I, I had a complete blast. Anyway, that's the story of the Red Bull Last Stand. I will 1000% be there again next year and every year leading up. And maybe next year, I'll be on a fixie as well uh state bicycles i just got i literally just got an email from them we're gonna do a little something with fixies so maybe next year i'm on a fixie plus the road bike such an amazing event if you're in texas if you're near san antonio at all i highly recommend it highly recommend this event and yeah next year i'll be there so anyway hope you enjoyed the story guys as always vegan cyclist yeah